Are you Europeans feeling the cold yet? You've probably chopped down every tree in the parks around you to stay warm. Население, как в Средневековье, стало запасаться дровами на, на зиму. Россия здесь при чем? Сами виноваты. Everyone on Russian state television is waiting for the Europeans to freeze. This is Masha Brazunova with Fake News, your main guide to the world of Russian propaganda, coming to you from right here in Riga. This time we are talking about you and how you are going to cope with the winter ahead. Russian gas in Europe is a topic we've all heard something about before, right? To begin with, I'll ask you a question. Are you feeling the impact of the lack of Russian gas supplies right now? Are you afraid of what your heating bill is going to look like this winter? Let us know in the comments, because we here in Riga, to be quite honest, are kind of dreading what the number on the winter bills is going to be. But the people on Russian TV seem to be even more worried than we are. Ну, то есть, либо мастер клуна, либо, а что он хочет, вот как он, вот, вот немцы уже там решили все, там, 17 градусов зимой, или там 15 у них будет, там, мы будем, там, чехи вообще говорят, мы сожжем все, лишь бы, так сказать, согреться. Ну, для начала сожжем Украину, а потом все остальное, что останется... И пройдем погреться. Да, пойдем погреться. При этом они нас обвиняют, что мы виноваты. Что за мозги? Мы говорим, да вы запустите Северный поток-2, он у вас стоит вообще хоть завтра, откройте экран, он поехал, все. Не-не-не, это нельзя сделать, понимаете? Виноваты русские, мы будем тут все страшно мерзнуть, но стран не откроет. But talk show hosts aren't the only ones making fun of the energy crisis. Vladimir Putin, for example, used the words of a Soviet cartoon to bless Europe with a long winter. И нам останется только одно. Только одно, как в известной русской сказке, приговаривать мерзни, мерзни, волчий хвост. Мерзни, мерзни, волчий хвост. But you Europeans probably don't know that you are so freezing that you've already chopped down all the trees and the parks for firewood. A number of pro-Russian media sources published reports that Berliner residents had cut down almost all the trees and the parks to stock up on firewood for the winter. In these articles, they refer to Bloomberg as a source. This is not at all what the US publication said. Yes, the article they refer to talks about the energy crisis and growing demand for firewood, but the article mentions the cutting of trees in the tear garden as a historic reference. It's something that happened during World War II, not what is happening now. Here's a quote. In Berlin, the crisis creates unsettling echoes of the desolation following World War II. With fuel in short supply, residents chopped down nearly all the trees in the central Tiergarten Park for heating. It can obviously be seen in the article that the current situation is clearly not the same. But this does not stop Russian propaganda. Yulia, здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. These are our colleagues from the program Anti-Fake. If you think, nice job they are doing, they are exposing fake news and propaganda too, then I have to disappoint you, my friends. They don't expose fake news, they are basically our evil twin. After all, the program Anti-Fake is broadcast on Russia's Channel 1 with a mission to fight the lies of the West. Почему вы вот сейчас в такой теплой одежде у нас на экране? А, ну у нас сейчас просто утро, еще не разогрелся этот, я не знаю, газовый котел, как он называется. Потом к 12 нормально. Всю ночь, чтобы работал газовый котел, здесь ни у кого не работает. Ну, сейчас через, уже через пару часов будет нормально. The freezing lady here is Yulia, a Russian who has been living in Germany for a long time. You might remember her from the viral video where she is seen harassing Ukrainian refugees in Salzburg. She joins the program from Munich and says she is wearing a coat because it's cold. Is anyone here watching from Munich? Back in mid-October, did you really walk around your apartment in a coat? Because when Yulia was live on Russian TV, the temperatures in Munich were at 18 degrees. Here in Riga, it's colder and we are not walking around in coats. 
but the fakes don't end there. С самого начала мы наблюдали, что немцы очень радовались украинским беженцам, да. На мой взгляд, обстановка в Германии как-то уходит в уже более нейтральную сторону или, например, уже типа завязывайте с этими санкциями, нам бы зимой нормально погреться, вот. Do you recognize Germany in this video? These are the main streets of Berlin, after all, right? In reality, this is the town of Apochka in the Pskov region. You can even see that all letters are Cyrillic. When talking about the deteriorating attitude towards Ukrainian refugees in Germany, Channel One shows video footage from a Russian city. A classic technique of state propaganda, as you already know. Все больше людей осознает, кризиса можно было избежать, если бы не антироссийские санкции, и за их последствия должен кто-то отвечать. Of course, Europeans have begun to realize that it's not the aggressor that is to blame, but it's the sanctions against this aggressor that are to blame. And they are coming out to protest. No, we know, of course, there are growing concerns about the energy crisis. And of course, there are protests. But sometimes propaganda gives Europeans a helping hand and makes them up. How about this, for example? On Twitter, there is a trending hashtag against sanctions. Europeans post pictures of empty plates addressed to their politicians. There is no food on them because they were eaten by anti-Russian sanctions. Sounds plausible, right? But there is more to it. Russia Today was the first organization to publish news about this trend. So we decided to take a look into the hashtag against sanctions. And indeed, we saw several tweets allegedly from Europeans on this topic. But when we look at the accounts, it turned out that they were all created on the same day and had exactly one tweet with the hashtag against sanctions. And on top of that, the profile pictures of these Europeans weren't pictures of themselves, but images of Bollywood actress, singing presenter, and so on. That is a terrific example of how successfully the propaganda machine works. They take a real, undeniable problem, and then it begins to grow with the addition of increasingly far-fetched details. Sometimes this transformation is genuinely difficult to follow. And now it's time to say goodbye. Take care, stay warm, and look out for the next episode where we will continue to guide you further into the absurd world of Russian propaganda. This has been Masha Borzunova. You've been watching fake news. See you next time.